Hello everyone, welcome to problem 2.17 of David Griffith's Electrodynamics. <clears throat> so the problem statement says an infinite plane slab of thickness 2D carries a uniform charge density of rho. Find the electric field as a function of y, where y is equal to zero at the center, and then plot the electric field versus y, calling the electric field positive when it points in the plus y direction, and negative when it points in the minus y direction. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm just gonna, instead of redrawing the diagram, I've already solved this problem, but we're just gonna use this diagram again. So you can think of this um, as our infinite plane slab. Just imagine that it continues um, you know, in both directions along this x-axis all the way down. Um, I've only just drawn a portion of it here and just tried to draw some dotted lines to indicate that it extends. So we want to find the electric field in all regions as a function of y. So our coordinate system is as follows. We have our x direction here, our y direction going this way, and then z is our vertical axis. So let's just start off with Gauss's law, right? And let's imagine, let's try to find the, the electric field while you're still inside the slab, right? Because the slab has a thickness of 2D. So let's imagine that we're somewhere inside of the slab going in the positive direction, but we're not quite out of the slab yet. Okay, so what I mean is, imagine we have a Gaussian surface. It's like a cylindrical Gaussian surface inside of uh, and this is inside of the slab so let's just imagine that our left end of the Gaussian surface is at the center of our slab and then extends this way and let's just say the end of the slab is at this boundary here so we haven't quite made it out of the slab yet and remember it tells us that the thickness of the slab is 2D, which means um, this distance, one half of the uh, side of the slab, if, if our slab is centered, would just be D. And then we'll call the length of our Gaussian surface here Y, which is a variable distance. Okay, so we know that the uh, electric field is, or the charge density is uniform. And let's go ahead and write Gauss's law down real quick. So we have, sorry about that. You have E dot dA is equal to the charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught. Now what is the charge enclosed? Well the charge enclosed is the charge enclosed in our Gaussian surface and so you can kind of imagine it here. And so the charge enclosed would just be, you know, since it's uniform charge density, that means there's, um, it makes it easy. So it's really just the charge density times the volume enclosed in our Gaussian surface, right? So we have rho, which is the volume charge density, multiplied by the volume of our Gaussian surface. Well, it's a cylindrical object. So the volume would just be the radius, I mean, sorry, the circumference of um, one of the sides, so it's 2 pi, let's just call the radius of our um, cylinder S. So 2 pi S, or sorry, I'm do we're doing the, uh, that's the surface area, my bad. Uh, we want the volume, so we want to multiply by the area. So pi, let's just call it S squared, which gives us the area of the, the end here, and multiply that by the length. So multiplied by y. All right, so moving on to the left side of our equation, which is um, getting the flux integral. If you think about, in terms of symmetry, for any given distance y away from, just horizontally away from the center of our uh, slab, due to symmetry, it should be a constant electric field along the xz plane. There should be no change um, in the electric field along the xz plane. So at any given distance y away from the center, 
you should have a constant electric field, meaning that the electric field E can be pulled out of the integral since it's a constant of integration. And then we just have the surface area integral over the surface area which the electric field is passing through. So in this case, um, the electric field lines are coming um, just horizontally out, per, like in the y direction and in the minus y direction away from uh, the slab, which means it's not going through the, the electric field lines are not going through the surface of the cylinder, they're just going through the surfaces of the ends of our cylinder. Um, in this case, it would just be this end of the cylinder over here. So, if we're considering in the y direction, in the positive y direction. So, this side of the integral um, would be E, which is pulled out of the integral, and then the surface area of just a circle. So that's just pi s squared. And then this is equal to Q enclosed, which is rho pi s squared y divided by epsilon naught, and canceling pi s squared, canceling pi s squared, we find that the electric field is equal to rho y over epsilon naught. And this is going to be in, well, it depends on your direction, I guess. Um, it could be in the positive y direction or the minus y direction. Um, so plus or minus y hat, I guess. Just depends on which way. Uh, the the electric vector is pointing. So that's given inside of the uh, slab. Now what about outside of the slab? Once you've come outside of the slab and all space beyond it, what is the electric field? Well, in that case, our Q enclosed, which we found here, instead of it being Y, which is the length um, of our Gaussian surface here, well, if we extended our Gaussian surface to um, include the entire uh, volume or distance here of the of the slab and beyond let's just say we made our well this is a very bad cylinder but let's just say we extended our cylinders length so that it extended outside of the slab well then the amount of charge enclosed would be all the charge enclosed in, in this volume here which would be um, pi r squared or pi s squared times the total distance uh, d. And so instead of uh, having y here, uh, we would just have a d here. So this equation is for, um, I would say, y between, um, I guess it would be d and minus d. So as long as you're between d and minus d, then the this equation applies. But as soon as you get outside of um, for y greater than d or y less than minus d, the equation for the electric field is a constant. Instead of y, you just have d. And so, I don't know, plus or minus y hat, depending on which direction you're going. So yeah, that's that's basically the argument. Um, it's pretty simple. So I, I I think that makes sense, and I hope that makes sense as as to why the y gets replaced with a d. I'm um, just simply because all the charge enclosed in our Gaussian surface now takes up you know the volume of length d here. So um, now just simply we just need a graph. So which is pretty simple to make. So let's just draw a quick sketch. So this is the axis for the electric field, magnitude of the electric field, and this is the y-axis. So let's just mark uh, distance, this is d here, this is minus d, and as you saw in our equation, the electric field increases linearly with y until you get to a distance d where it becomes a constant. So it would just be like a straight line, and then like a, a constant slope line and then a straight line that way and then a negative slope this way and when you get to minus d you get a constant negative electric field that way so that's what the graph would look like and that that's it that's all for the problem so um 
yeah, pretty simple. If you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to let me know and uh, in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.